So dear chemical engineers, instrument engineers, faculty members, people who are working in the petroleum industry, welcome you all for this uh, introductory session on plant automation and process control. Some of you may be wondering uh, why two terms are being used here, plant automation and process control. Is there any difference between the two terms? Yes, of course. Plant automation is a way how your instrumentation can be achieved. Process control is a concept. So process control has got a multiple purpose. So in a continuous process unit, whether it is a fertilizer plant or a power plant or a petroleum refinery, there are so many variables. So once a plant is started, so during startup, you will have a lot of uh, the throughput cannot be achieved just uh, in a single minute. So it has to be achieved over a period of time. Suppose if you have a furnace, the furnace temperature has to be increased to 50 degrees per hour or so. So to start up a refinery, a particular unit, it may take eight hours. So at one point of time, after eight hours, you will reach steady state. So once a steady state is reached, you are supposed to produce your products and the plant operations are supposed to be absolutely normal. But this is in theoretical. But uh, the practically, it is not possible. A lot of uh, disturbance will be there. A lot of uh, variations will be there due to external disturbances, ambient conditions, or you may receive uh, steam from power plant or uh, the uh, downstream pressure on the, your downstream side. A lot of variables are there. Because of these variations, as well, there are some variations happen over a period of time. For example, some of the heat exchanges uh, may get fouled up after three months or four months or six months. So these kind of variations will not uh, make you to maintain steady state condition. So in order to maintain steady state condition, we need instrumentation and control. This is known as process control. Process control is achieved by employing different kind of instruments. I think most of you are familiar with uh, the different kind of parameters that need to be maintained in a process plant. The popular four parameters are one, flow, second, pressure, level, temperature. So temperature, pressure, level, flow. So by adjusting any of these four parameters, you'll be able to achieve different kind of processes. For example, in a refinery, refinery is slightly different from other process unit. Let me try to give a kind of a different feature. In most of the chemical plants, you will have multiple raw materials. For example, if we have to manufacture sulfuric acid, you may require more than two or three raw materials. And finally, the end product will be one. Whereas in a refinery, you have a single raw material that is uh, crude oil. But at the end of uh, the refining process, you will get multiple products like LPG, diesel, kerosene, ATF, uh, motor spirit, lubricants, etc. So whether it uh, refinery or any other petrochemical plant, each plant has to be maintained at a particular pressure on the different stages you are supposed to maintain temperatures and the flow also need to be maintained. And who is giving all these values? All these values are set by your engineering consultant or your uh, the product uh, process package vendor. So someone like uh, uh, the process package vendor, he will say that if you are planning to process this particular type of crude oil, you are supposed to maintain atmospheric column pressure 1.03 uh, kg per centimeter square. And uh, your tray temperature should be so and so, 220 degrees centigrade. And the coil outlet temperature should be 365 degrees centigrade, etc. So all these are part of your process flow diagram. So once a refinery is commissioned, the process package vendor gives you the process flow diagram as well as process parameters. So as I said earlier, it is not possible to maintain all the parameters without instrumentation. That is where the plant automation or the instrumentation is going to play a role. But as I said, a process control is a concept. It is primarily to maintain the plant parameters as per design. Because only when you are maintaining the plant parameters as per design, you will be producing products that can be sellable in market. So otherwise, your plant will be running. You will be producing products but the product may not meet uh, the specifications and uh, it is difficult to take it to market. So one is to maintain design condition. Number two is to, to make sellable product. Number three is safety. Because at any point of time, if a vessel is pressurized, 
and if it goes beyond design value it, every possibility for explosion is there every possibility for fire to happen is there so in order to maintain all the parameters under control from safety point of view we need plant automation and process control and also to save god our human being so it is imperative for all the people so whether you are a chemical engineer mechanical engineer instrument engineer electrical engineer who are working in a chemical process plant or a petroleum refinery they need to have basic understanding about process control and plant automation system so that is the reason we have structured this program so here in this five days program i will explain what i am going to cover in each day so the idea is to not to talk about the theoretical aspect of instrumentation i am not going to talk about uh, the equations or uh, formula the different kind of uh, first order uh, equation kind of stuff i am going to talk more about the practical aspect or the application of instrumentation so that is how we have structured this program so let me quickly walk through what we are going to cover on each day right so on the day 1 we are going to talk about something very very important an uh, important document or drawing known as pndi diagram so pndi diagram in short it is known as pndid so pndid is have been evolved from process flow diagram which is known as pfd right so for all this to happen there should be a starting point so either an existing refinery they may want to construct a new plant or they may want to increase their capacity so in order to achieve their goals they would have uh, come out with the plans to increase their uh, they put up a new additional plant or sometimes a organization may like to start a new greenfield uh, process plant so that is how the first uh, the conceptual level uh, they will come out with an idea then they are the different kind of stakeholders will be involved some known as a process consultant engineering process consultants will be involved then the engineering process consultants will do kind of a study feasibility study suppose if you are putting up a refinery a new plant in coimbatore right of course uh, they will always look for a place which is closer to port but sometimes uh, due to political or social needs uh, they may also try to put up a plant within inland suppose if they want to put up a new plant in coimbatore they will see where all this product can be uh they were all the industry can uh, uh feed their services right so, so for example if a new small refinery is put up in a place then where all this product can be taken so based on that they will come out with something known as a feasibility report this feasibility will report will have different chapters for example one chapter will talk about uh, the socio economic conditions whether the local people will get job and another chapter will talk about the environmental regulations will they be met for example there may be a perennial uh, unpolluted river may be there will it get uh, polluted by any chance or if there is a huge forest reserve will the animals and uh, the flora and fauna will they get affected so all such kind of implications would be analyzed and uh, finally they come out with a feasibility report based on the feasibility report once are the green the board of directors give the approval then the next level of activity will happen that is where the engineering process consultants epc vendors will be roped in then they are going to design the entire plant so in paper so not the uh, actual construction they are going to come out with this paper and one particular group process engineers they will try to use a software known as the simulation package there are popular simulation packages are there Uh, from companies like uh, Aspen Tech, Honeywell, so they have a huge uh, package which are very very special and uh, very niche. So these packages uh, we will be having facility to feed in the raw material, the quality of the raw material, the quantity of raw material, and you will be able to add different kind of instruments. For example, the process engineers know. what are all the equipments need to be needed if it is a simple distillation a distillation a preheat train a desalter a furnace a distillation column a overhead separator so they know by experience and they will try to add that and allow the simulation software to be run and finally the simulation software is comprised of lot of equations based on chemical engineering principles 
uh, uh, heat balance, material balance, all kind of your theoretical knowledge, they are converted into mathematical model and the mathematical model, they are all converted into computer generated codes, which will be running in the simulation engine. So once the simulation engine is running, the final output you will get, and you will come to know what kind of products you will be able to achieve. And you will be able to figure out whether this will be meeting the market demands. So how much LPG I'll be producing, how much gasoline I'll be producing, what kind of gasoline, what octane number, what sulfur level, all this will be part of your simulation output. And based on that, the process engineers will come out with something known as process flow diagram. And after process flow diagram, actually it will not happen overnight. It will not happen in single iteration. It has to be validated by the customer's group, the, uh, the customer side also. Customer means the person who wants to put up a plant, the process plant or a refinery. They, they will also have a process engineering group. They will validate all this stuff and uh, it will also be validated by the finance, project team, so multiple teams. And once this is frozen, then the next stage is to come out with PNI diagram. So this PNI diagram is very, very important for the people who are part of the operations group because whenever you want to suggest some modification in the plan, immediately the document that will be retrieved from your archives or the engineering vault will be the PNI diagram, corresponding PNI diagram. Because the PNI diagram will have everything that you can see in the plan. So whether you see a process vessel, a heat exchanger, safety wall, the flow transmitter, flow control wall, or uh, whatnot. Everything you'll be able to see, even some of the things which you don't see in the field, which are behind your control room. So for example, your, uh, uh, the process control loop or the, uh, the algorithms or the microprocessor, all that will be part of your PNI diagram. And the, by, the PNI diagram cannot be accommodated in a single page. So earlier, when uh, during the AutoCAD period, uh, we used to have a large PNI diagram, which will be, which can be put in up in a big uh, conference table. So we, we, but today with the help of software, we are able to generate PNI diagrams, which will be running through pages. So which can be accommodated in a A5 page. So they have some standard uh, length of uh, the length and breadth for the pages, specification for the pages, so that it can be easily handled. And today, the PNI diagrams uh, can be everything. Uh, you know, all the uh, uh, since I mentioned that uh, all equipments, all your fittings, all your instruments are part of PNI diagram. Each uh, item will have a unique identification number. For example, here you can see V104. This is a vessel, and its serial number is 104. And then you are able to see some pumps here P102A, P102B. Normally, whenever you have a pump, there will be a spare pump. Sometimes you will have double spare pump, A, B, C. You will have three pumps if it is a critical location. Then you will be able to see here uh, the different kind of uh, instruments, FE. FE stands for flow element. FT stands for flow transmitter. Then you have uh, flow alarm, low, flow alarm high. Of course, uh, this is a standard picture which does not have numbers for all that. But normally, you will also have number. For example, FT104. FT105. So like that, uh, it will be in a, uh, see a serial fashion. All the numbers will be there. And uh, so this is a very, very important document for process engineers, that is chemical engineers as well, instrument engineers. Time and again, it will be referred. And you should know what are all the different kinds of elements in the PNI diagram. So that is what we are going to cover in day one. And we will also spend considerable time in how to study the PNI diagram. So I think there are many people who are offering a one day workshop on how to do, how to study the PNI diagram. But uh, since uh, this is a heterogeneous group and the people are from different background, so we are not going to spend too much of time, but uh, we'll spend considerable time on day one. So at a high level, we can, uh, we'll be able to understand the nitty of understanding a PNI diagram. So later if needed, probably we can have a, a lengthier workshop. So that is the part of a day one. So now I'll take a pass and if you have any questions, you can ask me. So before I move on to the rest of the modules. Any questions or any clarifications?
you can unmute and ask your question very question or if you want to share your thoughts you are okay so normally in our uh, academic curriculum so though people study instrumentation in detail so there is a four year five year program i am not sure whether uh, there is a dedicated syllabus on p and i diagram so these are all some of the uh, realistic uh, needs you know the practical applications of uh, so whatever theory you would have uh, studied that will be put into practice when you are designing the diagram but the actual in the field of when you are using the pnd diagram so we need to know more about the generic aspects so rather than the theory any questions any comments let me check the chat window in chat dvis program so that we don't want to miss important things yes i am going to talk about all the five days right so after first day after giving an explanation about the pnd diagram i am going to talk about the basics of instrumentation so as i said uh, there are four parameters that need to be measured in any process plant or petroleum or petrochemical plant they are le flow level pressure temperature are there any more parameters that can be monitored yes of course we can monitor density we can monitor moisture in a particular stream we can monitor specific chemical uh, what is that percentage for example online uh, H2S monitor can be there. Online viscosity monitor can be there. And uh, normally, when we talk about instrumentation, we most of us we are familiar with our domestic instrumentation. So even in our day-to-day -day life, we have a lot of instrumentation in use that is to aid our uh, specific function. For example, in your two-wheeler, you will be able to see speedometer and odometer. In a car, in the dashboard, you will be able to see speedometer, odometer, then torque, the RPM. as well your uh, fuel level indicator your brake oil temperature so uh, uh, there are some more instruments are being shown there so that is helping you to maintain the perfect condition while riding as well as from maintenance aspect of it so when it comes to process plant we need to continuously monitor it is a very very small plant for example you are running a cottage industry right uh, so you are trying to have a binary distillation of a particular stream now you just to boil it and then allow the vapor to condense and you are splitting the raw material to a and b that's all so probably you may not require an instrumentation but still there will be a person needed to continuously monitor the process but when we are talking about a, a, a process industry there will be thousands of thousands of parameters which are very difficult to monitor that is where instrumentation come into play and the instrumentation they are normally Uh, categorized to one is field instrument that means in a field when you go to the actual plant you will be able to see a dial gauge which will be showing the temperature of the lubricant or the pressure of the compressor etc but uh, this can be monitored only by the field operator in any process plant uh, depending on the complexity you will have number of field operators but most of the instruments are monitored and controlled from a control room So in the control room, all the instruments they have to send in the information. So it is almost like a cockpit of a flight. So like a, how a pilot is monitoring the entire of, uh, the flying activity happening, as well the ground level instruments or the whether the runway is free, the communication happening between the control room, control tower. So all that happens from the cockpit. So uh, like that uh, from control room, the control room operator is going to monitor that. so in order to monitor the different parameters we are having two type of instruments one is known as open loop open loop means from the field through a cabling mechanism or through some signals pneumatic or electronic signals you will be receiving some kind of uh, parameters you will continuously monitor you will be able to continuously monitor what is the flow in the crude oil from the uh, very first uh, section of the unit then uh, different kind of products how much is being produced what is the pressure in the distillation column what is the temperature all that information will be coming to the control room so this is a simple open loop so normally they are referred as indicators the second set of uh, instrumentation they are known as closed loop which means 
not only you will be able to monitor the instrument parameters, the parameter, the, the particular parameters from the instrument, you will also be able to control it. How can you do that? With the help of a microprocessor. And uh, but uh, all that, you know, so it is not just a single microprocessor. The loop will have several components like a flow element, flow transmitter, and uh, then again, this instrument will send the, suppose if it, uh, it, uh, the instrument will send a signal to, uh, what is that, I2P converter, current to pneumatic converter, and then uh, the electronic signal will come to the control room, and uh, the control room, it will go through a microprocessor, and one signal will come to the control room. So this is the inward flow of the information. So again, now the operator has to give a set value so based on the design. So for example, if a plant is supposed to run at 500 meter cube per hour, he will input uh, the key value by using a keyboard. The keyboard is not like your laptop keyboard. It will be a specialist keyboard. Of course, I will talk about all that in the uh, control room uh, operations in the next module. So with the help of a special keyboard or a mouse, you'll be able to feed in what should be the set value. So based on that, the microprocessor will generate an output, which is known as output OP or MP. So there are different uh, conventions uh, depending on your instrumentation system. Normally the instrumentation manufacturers, either they are from uh, USA or from Japan. So most of the manufacturers, the original equipment manufacturers of plant automation like uh, Honeywell, Yoko Gova, ABB system, or um, uh, any other system. So they will be either from US or Japanese. So uh, slight conventions are different, but the concepts are same. So finally, this controller output will go and activate a control valve. So that is through a pneumatic, uh, current pneumatic converter. So all that, uh, they are all part of your closed to loop. And uh, by moving the control valve up and down, or opening up and closing up, you will be able to regulate the flow of the stream. So by changing the flow of the stream, sometimes you will also be able to maintain the temperature. For example, if it is a temperature to be maintained, the flow of the fuel oil or fuel gas need to be adjusted. Similarly, if, uh, if you want to reduce the pressure, the flow of the gas going out of the separator, you may have to release. So these are all part of a closed loop system. So we are going to discuss about what are all the different kind of instruments, open loop, closed loop, in detail. So if there are no questions, then I'll move on to the third day. On third day, we are going to talk about the different control strategies. So though I talk about open loop, closed loop, the control, the second set of uh, the closed loop, it can be divided into multiple types of instruments, multiple types of controls, or based on what you want to achieve. So depending on what we want to achieve, then the control strategy can be different. For example, in the, even in your house, you would have seen simple controls like uh, uh, your on-off control in your water heater. Whenever the, you, you would have already set the temperature, not by uh, inputting the parameters, but uh, with the help of a dial gauge. So with the help of a dial gauge, you would have set the temperature, preset the temperature. So depending on that, the thermostat will either get activated or go on and shut off mode. So this is known as the on off control. Then we have something known as cascade control, split range control. Then you have something known as a, uh, split range control means, uh, for example, uh, let me show this uh, picture. So I hope you are able to see by the cursor movement. So here, this is a vessel. This vessel, I want to maintain the pressure. So what should the, the controller system do? When are the pressure exceeds, then it has to open a valve. So that is a simple control. But in the case of this system, what I'm trying to do is to provide a split range control. That is when the controller output goes from uh, zero to 50%, then this particular valve will open and the gas will go to the compressor. So the compressor will pull all the vapors and it will be able to maintain the pressure in this particular vessel. But due to some unavoidable circumstances, the upstream pressure for this vessel is uh, opening up and uh, it is putting in more inputs. So the one by activating the compressor speed, I'm unable to maintain the compressor, the pressure in the system, then the controller output will go beyond 50%. So when the controller output goes beyond 50%, I 
I am going to open another wall. So that that wall will lead my gas to flat system where it will be burnt. So this is known as split range control. So like that, then in a boiler you will have three element control. It is not a very simple level control or simple flow control. The level and flow as well the steam flow rate. So all are integrated, and then we have come out with something known as a three element control algorithm. There is a reason for it. So there is known as a swelling and shrinking effect. So right now I am not going in depth about all the concepts so why at all the three element is needed but definitely on day three we are going to discuss in detail so I am not only going to explain all this uh, with the slides I am also going to show the with the help of a simulator so after completing uh, my next two slides I'll show the slides you will be able to understand on day four I am going to talk about uh, the features of distributed control system. So today, distributed control system or SCADA system, they are part of any continuous process unit. So three decades or four decades back, most of the control rooms were analogly managed. So that means uh, in the control room, the you will be able to see number of uh, uh, instrumentation will be there, like the dial gauges, flow chart, the uh, what is that uh, chart printer. So many different kind of instrumentation will be there and. Uh, each instrument has to have a one-to-one -one replication in the control room. So the control room itself will be so huge and the operator, when he wants to read all the parameters in the control room, uh, literally he will be pushing a trolley on which uh, you will have a log book and you take down all the readings because everything is, though they are all coming electronically, but there is no recording mechanism, except some, uh, some small charts where some certain trends will be recorded. So other key parameters, they have to be noted good down by the control room operator. But in late uh, in 80s, we have started having the computerized control system. Here, the entire plant parameters come to the control room and the control room operator will be able to see the different aspects of the parameter with the help of CRT or uh, your screens. So in each screen, you will have a different kind of a, a display systems. For example, here right now in the screen, you, will, you are able to see a small version of the process plant uh, as a process flow diagram, as a process flow diagram, so that it is easy to comprehend. Then there are certain pages where you will be seeing the same parameters in a trend fashion, trending fashion. So in a specific instrument, you can drill down and then see whether this particular parameter is maintaining at uh, the stipulated level or whether it is uh, deteriorating or is it uh, going up, escalating. So by seeing the trend in the different uh, 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 para the instruments, you will be able to figure out whether the plant is under control because process control is the concept. And that is what we want to achieve, process control. And by doing process control, I forget to mention, so the instrumentation not only helps you to have a safety of the plant and the personnel, it is also going to help you to achieve quality. Quality control is also achieved. So I think I already mentioned that is what we are trying to achieve design condition to produce sellable products. So all that will be possible. So the control room operator will be continuously navigating the different uh, pages of the control or the screens like uh, a pilot, right? So theoretically speaking, the control room operator does not have to do anything, but in reality, it is not so. so. All of a sudden there will be an alarm. The operator has to acknowledge the alarm. Acknowledge means, yes, I have noted down. Then after acknowledging, then he has to take corrective action. So either by adjusting different parameters in the control room or by coordinating with the field room through audio, so you'll have a communication mechanism. So with that, you'll be able to communicate with the operator and ask him to start another pump or bypass the control bar or depending on the scenario, he will give some kind of instruction and finally the stability will be achieved. So all those things we are going to discuss about the DCA system. It has got a long facility. It has got trending facility. You can see different controls uh, in a group manner. So for example, if uh, instruments are 100 instruments are there, eight, eight instruments are grouped under one category. So all the instruments related to the preheat train in one page, all the instruments related to furnace in another page, all instruments related to the distillation column, overhead pressure. So all that will be grouped appropriately. All that will be pre-configured by the instrumentation vendor in consultation with the plant people and of course uh, at any point of time we can also modify it 
so all that i will be explaining and again after this slide i will be showcasing the simulator so it is not just a static slide we are also going to have a simulator through which we will be able to understand the different parameters then on uh, the final uh, day i am going to talk about something known as process historian why at all process historian important so we all think that the control room operator is doing a great job yes of course but his job is complete once his uh, shift is over so he he will be concerned about the plant parameters only during his uh, shift the eight hours so morning six o'clock he will come in and then ensure all the parameters are okay if not he will take corrective action and while handing it over uh, he will ensure that everything is okay and then hand it over after that uh, then he will will not be bothered but uh, there are some other stakeholders like process engineer process engineer's job is to continuously ensure that all the equipments are performing according to design and none of the equipments are deteriorating in performance and they have to ensure that the productivity is achieved by adjusting certain parameters so even uh, beyond the uh, work hours they will be thinking about the plants and uh, they need the plant information because plant information the whichever the instrument data for example what is the crude oil flow what is the flow of uh, different products what is the oil outlet temperature all these critical parameters are not only important for the control room operators but for other stakeholders so this is one set of people then we have another group of people known as planners planning people also want to know how much crude oil has been processed in the last 24 hours and uh, how much is left over in the tank form how much need to be processed in the next four days so based on all these parameters they will be doing the planning activity for the next uh, six months three months one month weekly weekly planning daily planning not only planning planning and scheduling so based on that then the so it is actually they, they will take input from the plan and they will come out with the plans the monthly plan weekly plan and again they will submit to the operations group operations group will rigorously and religiously follow that so in order to do all that they need plan parameters earlier before advent of uh, DCS system or the historian system, they used to come to the control room and uh, take down all their readings and then they go back to their respective cabin and uh, then they start uh, analyzing all the data, put it in Excel sheet, process it, and then they will see what is, oh, they will apply, for example, if I am a process engineer, I'll try to calculate what is the heat exchanger efficiency, I'll try to put in Excel sheet and see what is the trend, whether it is coming down or going up or is it being maintained. So all that I'll be doing, but during that activity, most of my time is lost in data collection and collision. So the actual activity of the core activity of the stakeholders are only minimal. But that is where some technology vendors have come out with a concept known as historian. So historian is nothing but a hard disk along with a rugged software. So it is a real-time database. That means whatever information comes to the control room, one set of information will go to the database and then get updated. So that is offline. So it is not into the control room, something will be saved. But beyond control room, another set of information will be in real time that will get saved in the uh, real-time database. So as I said, you will have thousands or several thousands of instruments will be there. And each instrument is going to give every second data. So the volume of data will be so huge. So the historian, designing of the historian, uh, what is that? Your database, that is not like your conventional database. So it has to be all the data need to be compressed and accommodated in a very user-friendly manner. So that is where they try to bring in several kinds of algorithms, something known as spring doll algorithm. So based on that, all data will be compressed and at the same time, the data can also be retrieved in an easy uh, fashion. So now once the data is made available to your real-time database or data historian, so the two names are synonymous, then the data can be taken to the any stakeholder who is sitting in a remote location, either in the same refinery or even sitting from home, you will be able to access the data. And again, this data will be only one-way communication. So from external stakeholders cannot pump in any information to the control room because the safety of the control room will be hampered. So this information will flow in. And once the information flows to the stakeholder, 
there are several modules available in the historian so that the plant information can be viewed either in excel format or word form word document or something like control room you can also have a pseudo graphics like how the control room operator is seeing you will also be able to see the uh, in a similar fashion but most of the time these external stakeholders will not be bothered about all minute details they are only interested in key parameters but uh, like a control room operator they even need not want to see all the parameters once in every second they would like to see the parameters once in 10 minutes or once in half an hour depending on the situation of course the frequency will vary based on the need and the demand so that is what being facilitated with the process historian on fifth day i am going to talk about the historian and what are all the features what can be performed what cannot be performed for all the different kind of vendors whether the plant automation vendors are they into the space of historian so are they successful and today we are talking about iot devices and we are also talking about concepts known as industry 4.0 or we talk, also talk about digital transformation is it different from process historian is there a overlap or is it going to be the same like uh, what we have already seen so because uh, historians have come into existence uh, uh, almost in the uh, 80s and 90s for last three decades historians are being effectively used but of course not all the features so today we are talking about uh, digital transformation is it nothing but a historian or is it going to be more than what we are being uh, what is being offered in historian so all that we are going to cover and uh, totally all the, the five days the entire five days program it is all practical oriented and we are talking more about application oriented fashion so we are not going to discuss uh, the theoretical aspect of course you will understand for example when i talk about control strategies you will be able to understand on off control split range control cascade control three element control a little bit of uh, the functional aspect you will understand but this five days program it is in a holistic fashion you are going to be exposed with the all the industry jargons related to the plant automation and process control system so before i share my uh, simulator uh, let me take a pause and ask questions so do we have any questions so far anyone we can unmute and ask your questions be able to are you able to see the screen of the simulator so this is a simulator of our this dcs system you are sent some cs from yokogawa so that is what we have simulated here is we are not only simulated the plant instruments we have also simulated the different equipments for example this is a three element boiler control this is known as uh, the graphics page by seeing the graphic page you will be able to understand uh, the flow of uh, the for example as a power plant or boiler operator you will know that uh, normally the inputs are coming from uh, left to right preheated feed water is coming here and uh, this is coming to the steam drum and the steam drum and mud drum they are interconnected so almost an integral uh, equipment so the uh water will come from the steam drum to the mud drum and uh, the steam will go here and then finally steam will be produced because you have some burners which are fired with the help of fuel oil or fuel gas then frequently we will have something known as a blow down so because uh, during the boiling activity the a lot of sediments will be there so the your water will get concentrated so in order to maintain the water quality we we let out some uh kind of water outside so with the help of a wall so you can see different kind of walls here some uh, i don't think we will most of them are control walls here but uh, when you see a complex uh, uh, graphics you will be able to see block walls emergency shutdown walls the symbol by reading the symbol you will be able to understand whether it is a control wall or a isolation wall so that is what we are going to cover in pnd diagram so almost this page will be a replica of your pfd plus pnd diagram and all these parameters will be in real time they get updated they are all coming from the field your process value pv so wherever you see a single a box with a single parameters we can understand that they are indicators that means one way communication wherever you see three parameters they are known as 
controllers. For example, the convention, there is an industry convention. LIC means level indicator controller, not not one is the serial number. So one value is the process value, one value is the set value, and another value is the controller output. Is there any other controller here apart from uh, this level controller? Can anyone point out? Okay, so we have one more controller here. This is regulating the fuel. So by maintaining the fuel pressure, fuel gas, we are able to maintain the pressure in the steam drum as well as the steam flow rate. So like, like that, uh, this stage, so the idea of showing this page is to show the different features of the BCS. This is known as a graphic page. Then we have something known as uh, the trend page, point trend. So single instrument you take, so let me run the simulation. So now uh, allow me to run this model for a few more seconds, few more minutes. So all along the plant was under static condition. So as the plant is running, so the we will come back to this page after some time. We have something known as uh, alarm page. Right now there are no alarms, alarm page. Control group page. So this is control group page. So as I said earlier, the different kind of instruments, so they are grouped for operational convenience. So, okay, I have seen the control page, but I want to see what is happening when I am trying to make an adjustment in single control. And all are interlinked, right? So whenever you adjust some parameter, it is not only going to adjust a particular instrument. For example, when I am going to increase the throughput by 5% by adjusting the flow control of the raw material, so immediately the level in a particular column vessel will go up and accordingly the level wall will open the flow so that uh, the flow to the secondary vessel will go up. So like that every stage, either the controller will automatically take care but each of these controllers, uh, like uh, how the pilot is putting the cockpit under uh, autopilot mode. So when everything is stabilized, when a plant is stabilized, all the controllers are in the automatic mode. But if at all, if you have some problem, if you have pro, if you face some challenge with a specific instrument, individually, you can take out an instrument from auto to manual mode. So that is what you are seeing here. This is a steam head. So every instrument, as I said earlier, you will have a unique ID. This is the description of the instrument, steam header pressure. And this controller is an automatic mode. So automatic mode means whenever I set up pressure, so within few minutes or within a, depending on the type of instrument, uh, the process value will get adjusted by adjusting my controller output. So either I can take in an auto mode or manual mode. Let me go back to the trend page. So trend page, uh, still it is not trending here. I'm not sure what is happening. Probably let me see the LIC, the next instrument. Okay. I think, uh, yeah. This parameter is being printed here. Right now, there is no disturbance. Let us try to do something with this uh, plant. Now, this. Okay, so I'll, I'll go through the different uh, pages. Uh, whenever there is an alarm, so let me create an alarm and you can see what is happening here. 